So we now know that cryptocurrency is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer digital asset, but you may be asking yourself, how the heck does something without a central institution, something that can be traded by anyone for anything and that can be copied and reproduced as another cryptocurrency, get a price? You've come to the right place. Today's lesson discusses price discovery. So if you're ready, let's get this lesson started. Quite simply, cryptocurrency is worth as much as someone is willing to give up for it in an exchange. This simple principle is the same concept that creates prices for everything in a free market. The process by which this price is determined is called price discovery. Let's start with a tangible example that people can easily wrap their mind around, like gold. How does gold get its price? For gold price to be discovered, there needs to be buyers and sellers of gold. Sellers currently own gold that they mined, found, stole or bought and they are willing to trade that gold if the price is right. Buyers on the other hand want gold to use as a store of value or to make jewellery or advanced electronics. Around the world there are many holders, buyers and sellers of gold and they all have different ideas about how much gold is worth. So how on earth do all these people agree on a price? And the answer is they don't. There is a common saying that every everyone has a price. What this means is that at some price you can be convinced to sell something you would normally not be keen on selling. This concept holds true in our example of gold as well. If a gold holder thinks the asking price is higher than it should be, they are more likely to sell their gold. For gold buyers, the inverse is true. Everyone wants something for free or cheap. When a gold buyer thinks the price is too high, they don't buy gold and instead find a good substitute like silver or wait until the price lowers. The price is largely determined by only the minority of people who own gold and are presently transacting at a given price and not the majority who are waiting to transact at a more desirable price. So that is all well and good, but it still doesn't answer the question of how does the price of gold get discovered in the first place. To understand this, we must think of the price as the point at which sellers and buyers agree to make a transaction. So it can be said that the current price of gold is the price at which at least one person is willing to sell and uh, the price at which one person, at least one person is willing to buy. On aggregate, over the marketplaces around the world, the transactions produce an average price for gold. Prices change when aggregate supply or demand for gold changes for whatever reason. When the supply of gold on the market increases or demand decreases, meaning when there are more people who want to sell gold than there are people who want to buy it, the price will go down to attract more buyers. When the supply of gold on the market decreases or demand increases, meaning there are more people that want to buy gold than want to sell it, the price of gold increases to attract more people to sell their gold. Prices for oil, grain, salaries, clothing and rent are all governed by this same principle of price discovery. Cryptocurrency is no different. On the internet, there are websites called exchanges where people buy and sell cryptocurrencies for fiat money, physical assets like gold or other cryptocurrencies. The average sale price across these exchanges is reported globally as the current price. This price can be denominated in, in any currency. Sometimes the price may vary between exchanges, but these variations usually do not last long as there is a financial incentive 
for traders to buy on markets with a cheaper price and sell on markets with a higher price. And this process is known as arbitrage. So there you have it, almost everything you need to know about how prices are discovered. As by now you are coming to realize learning about cryptocurrency requires understanding a great number of things including economics, social sciences, cryptography and software development ideologies. Don't worry my lovely students, there will, we will be covering it all in coming lessons. Your homework for today's lesson is to share this lesson with a friend or family, family member who you think might be interested in learning about how cryptocurrency get its price. If you support the work we do, please consider contributing to our crowdfunding campaign or becoming a sponsor. We would like to thank this semester's sponsor, the Children of Armenia Fund, for their support of the Heike Gun Crypto de Brots. Co-op is a non-profit organization empowering Armenia's village youth through their resources and opportunities to explore their intellectual curiosities. Look up some of Co-op videos to see the impact they're making on rural communities around Armenia. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Our next lesson addresses what can you do with cryptocurrency. Bye for now my lovely students, see you in the next class.